Joining me right now is Forbes Media Chairman Steve Forbes and the Bonson Group Managing Partner and CIO David Bonson. David is also the author of the new book, Full-Time Work and the Meaning of Life. First, your assessment on the jobs numbers on Friday. Steve Forbes, your takeaway. Uh, the headline was better than the underlying figures. Uh, you pointed out those revisions, which means you have to take a grain of salt on these initial reports. And if you look at the household survey, which uh, better measures what's happening with small businesses, that was down 184,000 jobs. And you look year over year, February of last year to February of this year, it's only up 600,000. So the jobs market is much, much weaker than that headline number suggests. And as you've pointed out before, much of it disproportionately is health care and government. And that's not a way you build a strong economy. Well, is this what we're going to continue to see going into the election? David, how do you see it? I have a little different perspective than Steve. I agree that on one hand, there is a significant structural weakness that has bothered me for years, which is the lower labor participation force. That's because I just simply want more people that either have a job or are looking for a job. And the BLS doesn't even try to measure that. They're measuring it in the context of only people that are looking for a job. But I don't think it's very easy to say that there's a whole lot of people out there that want a job that can't find one. I mean, um, there, it is true that we have a slightly higher percentage of government workers and healthcare workers in the last couple of reports, but the revisions have not been much higher than they historically have. They're always a little off, which I think speaks to the seasonal methodology they use, which isn't very good. It's a tough thing to measure, but for the most part, we can see in the weekly jobless claims, there obviously aren't a lot of unemployed people. That's a good thing, but I agree with Steve. What I want is productive work. That, to me, is what the government spending is crowding out. We're not getting the productivity we need. In the State of the Union, uh, the president leaned into some of those populist things that seem to work on people. Uh, it sounded like a campaign speech, frankly. But he said that uh, he wants to raise taxes on companies and the wealthiest and uh, highest earners. What do you think, David? Well, it's really disappointing that this class warfare issue is still such a big part of uh, American conversation, but it's also just totally untrue factually. The tax code is extremely progressive. The business tax cuts enacted in the Trump administration created jobs. It brought a trillion and a half dollars back on shore that had been repatriated. Uh, we're still benefiting from some of that. Uh, so on the margin, there's no question that companies that are able to pay less taxes to have available to uh, invest in their company is better for everybody. It's better for jobs, wages, and profits, which are the mother's milk of economic activity. Th this was a ridiculous point, and he also didn't even get to the biggest tax of all, the regulation, the regulatory environment that is this further burden and price, as my friend Steve says, on American business. It's a great point, and I look Looks like we're going to see more regulations coming out of this administration. Uh, gentlemen, great conversation. We so appreciate your time this morning. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Maria. Steve Forbes, David Bonson.